I'm a little tired of the eat your grains sticking out. I think it's run its course. I kind of want to start this thing like as a running tally where I put a bunch of different stickers on there. I don't have a lot of stickers at disposal though. I have this one, which I got at a trans march that I went to with my friends. I'm not trans, but I got the sticker, so might as well put it to some sort of use. So today I wanted to start kind of a new segment for this channel, or what could hopefully be a new segment for this channel, where I take all of the music I've listened to in the course of a month, sort of push them all into a short presentation and talk about them all here. I, I want to do this as sort of like a brief music review segment, sort of discussion on what I found interesting this month, hopefully give some recommendations, and if not that, just provide some interesting commentary for this. I know that the idea of dude at desk talking about music is at this point kind of an oversaturated market on YouTube. I don't necessarily care for being original here, I just kind of want to give some commentary on what I found interesting this month, sort of catalog it and send it out on the channel, hopefully give it some content, because hey, it's in desperate need of some. So yeah, let's get this uh, dog and pony show on the road to riches. <laughs> here is uh, just the August music discussion video. So let's get this started off with the singles that came out this month that I thought were interesting. Kind of wanted to shut them out here so you guys could know what I'm looking forward to in the coming months. My favorite single of August was... The new Anna Wise song, Nerve. Anna Wise is a vocalist who's not really in a huge spotlight right now, though she has worked with some pretty big names. She has lent her voice to two songs by Kendrick Lamar, the song Real off of Good Kid Mad City, and the song These Walls off of To Pimp a Butterfly. She's also worked with other people who I like a lot, like Quelle Chris, and she is gearing up right now for her debut solo album. She has made just brief EPs and some collaborative records here and there, but this is the lead single to her full-length debut, and I think it is freaking awesome. At the core of the song, Anna delivers this really fun pop melody that is pretty easy on the ears and immediately catchy, but what pushes it to the next level is the instrumentation on this track, which is this strange, intoxicating medley of all these different weird elements. At the core of it is this repeating hard snare. We get some little piano riffs over it, plinky guitars that come in over the chorus. After the chorus, we have this really strange section, which is like this tom-tom solo that has Anna doing these weird grunts over it, like she's playing tennis or something. All in all, Anna Wise's Nerve is a really fun pop song with just the right amount of weird in it. I was really impressed by this song, and I'm hoping that her next album is as good as what I'm hearing here. So yeah, Anna Wise's Nerve, look out for her album. I think it's coming out sometime in October. Next single I want to shout out is the Moonchild single, Money. Moonchild is a jazz trio, a contemporary jazz trio, who have been making some pretty good albums for uh, the better part of a decade now. And the singles I've been hearing leading up to this next album, which I believe is coming out sometime in September, I think it's shaping up to be one of their best albums yet. The smooth, kind of flowing songwriting is there, as it always is with Moonchild, but what is really pushing this above and beyond is it's super crisp, production. The synths that they come in with on this song in particular are so clean, they're so upfront, they're so... Mm, it's kind of hard to describe, honestly, and I think you should just listen to it because Moonchild has been releasing steadily this year some of the best contemporary jazz I've been hearing all year. Amber's voice over this is, of course, as good as it's always been. Uh, I just can't say anything bad about it. Go listen to Moonchild. They're a band that really deserves your time. Moving on from there is <laughs> the JPEG Mafia song, Jesus Forgive Me, I Am a Thought. <laughs> it's such a good title, oh my god. JPEG Mafia is one of the weirdest rappers in the underground right now, and he is on the way to releasing the follow-up to what was a breakthrough album for him, Veteran, and this is the lead single to that, and it's fucking weird. What we get here is sort of all of 
the weird branching parts of JPEG Mafia kind of squished together in one place. We get the indie rock inspired guitars that make up the background to this song, the foundation of it. We get JPEG Mafia's strange cultural references and odd jokes in a way. We get on here the loud and angry JPEG Mafia that we've come to expect at this point. And we get some actually pretty nice auto-tuned singing on the chorus to this thing. I was kind of shocked on how good JPEG Mafia's voice sounds on this chorus. So yeah, if you're in for something fucking strange, give this a shot. JPEG Mafia, Jesus forgive me. I am a thought. I love that title more and more every time I say it. Albums, album releases of this month that I thought were notable, some really good, some not that good, but still brought a lot of words out of me. Just what I thought was the most interesting stuff to come out this month. And let's go, my favorite album of the month was... Rhapsody, Eve. Easily some of the best hip hop I have heard all summer. If you're unfamiliar, Rhapsody is an artist, also an artist, who has previously worked with Kendrick Lamar. Uh, you may know her from her verse on his song Complexion from To Pimp a Butterfly. That was kind of a show stealer, kind of a mic drop moment for her. You may also know her 2017 album, Layla's Wisdom. But Rhapsody followed that album up this past month with Eve, which is, I think, her best work yet. Eve is a concept album exploring femininity and womanhood. The opening song addresses the position of black women and women of color in media, in society, and that kind of becomes the running theme throughout the album. Each song on the album being named after a notable woman of color, Oprah Winfrey, Serena Williams, Michelle Obama. And I like how Rhapsody gives each one of the songs this sort of personality or motif that kind of lends itself towards the woman it's named after. Oprah's song is about getting this money and sort of spreading it around amongst all of your friends. Michelle Obama's song is sort of this like party anthem, this moment of victory. And of course, Michelle Obama being the first lady, the motif on the chorus of the song is ladies first. Another moment of supreme cleverness that Rhapsody gives on this album comes on the song Whoopi, named after Whoopi Goldberg. The chorus of the song saying, you're gonna make a sister act up. Some pretty good stuff. Outside of that, Rhapsody just delivers uh, about an hour of material on this album of some really hard-hitting lyricism, some really amazing classic-sounding hip-hop, some really interesting sample choices on here too. Samples of Phil Collins in The Air Tonight, Jizza's Liquid Swords, which Jizza himself actually appears on, and we also get this awesome sample of Herbie Hancock's Watermelon Man on the song Whoopi, which every time I've heard Watermelon Man, I always thought to myself, this would make a really good beat for a hip-hop song. I, I wonder why more people don't sample this, and Rhapsody does, and it's amazing. <laughs> With that flute instrument that Herbie uses at the beginning of this song, it's such a weird beat. It's so off-kilter. I love it so much. And we also get some pretty amazing features on here, too, from the likes of Queen Latifah, Jizza, Jid, J. Cole, Lykelly47. All in all, if you are a hip-hop head, a hip-hop lover, if you're a fan of Jay-Z or Nas or the Fugees, you will find a lot of stuff on here that you will really like. Rhapsody's Eve, I thought it was an amazing album, and my favorite song is Whoopi. Next album we are going to be talking about is King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard Infest the Rat's Nest. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are the legendary seven-piece psychedelic rock group from Australia. You may know them for their run of albums in 2017 where they released five albums in one year. Holy Christ, these guys are nuts. After taking 2018 off to tour and I guess kind of take a creative break. They came back earlier this year with their album Fishing for Fishies, a very catchy swing rock album that had sort of this environmentalist message towards it. And this is their second album of this year, Infest the Rat's Nest, which is a thrash metal album explicitly about global warming. It kind of spins this narrative fiction about the Earth getting too hot and all the rich people fleeing to Mars while all the poor people are stuck down on Earth suffering. King Gizzard adapts thrash metal to this narrative as this 
dark sort of intense message about how climate change could legitimately be the end of the world. Nihilism aside though, the material King Gizzard comes through with on this album is some of their most energetic and powerful yet. Go listen to it if it sounds interesting. It does not fail to live up to the ridiculousness of its concept. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard infest the rat's nest. I thought it was really fucking kick-ass. And my favorite song off of here is Planet B. Moving on from that, we have Drake's Care Package. I, I said that not all of the stuff here would be stuff that I thought was great. Yeah. Yeah, this needs some work. Drake's Care Package is essentially a compilation of different songs that were left on the cutting room floor throughout Drake's career. They were all collected and put out into this small package and... Ah, this is bad. This is really bad. Drake fails to deliver, in my opinion, even a single good song on this album. All just sort of rough edited, kind of unwritten rap songs that even I think the biggest Drake fan wouldn't necessarily be coming back to after one or two listens. The only thing I found notable on this album actually was this one line by Drake that I thought was just shockingly bad. The line appears on the song Jodeci Freestyle where Drake says, I see straight through them like fish tanks with no fish in them. All of these people coming up to Drake acting like they're something that they're not. Drake sees right through them similar to the level that he would see through a fish tank if only it weren't for all of the fish in there. Drake is able to see through these people so much that he would be practically looking at a fish tank, but except for the part where there's fish in them, because he can't see through fish, unless it's like a jellyfish or something, in which case that would be like a saltwater fish tank. It would be very hard to like maintain and clean. That's not happening. These fish tank often have fish in them that are not see-through. In order for Drake to see through this fish tank, those fish would have to be removed. And then once those fish are removed, Drake could be able to see through it to the degree that he sees through these people. Who are these people he's seeing through? Not fish, evidently. Regardless, fuck this album. <laughs> fuck this album. Drake's care package. I did not like it and my favorite song was none of them. There wasn't even a good song on this album, period. Moving on from there is the Claro album Immunity. Claro is this indie pop darling who had a lot of anticipation building up to this debut album of hers that was released at the beginning of the month, and hey, I think it's all right. Most of the songs here, Claro is kind of giving a passive performance. She's kind of mumbly, she's kind of hush-hush. Her presence doesn't really dominate a lot of the songs here, and I think that is what I would be hoping for more if I were to like this album, is for her to make more of a statement by being on these songs. The songwriting itself, it's typical pop writing. It just kind of has this one idea that carries through the entire song. There's not a lot of variation. There's not a lot of highs and lows. It's, it's a pretty soft and easy ride the entire way through this album. There are moments that stand out. I like the song Closer to You. I like the auto-tune that Clara puts on her voice. I think it adds a lot of personality to her singing. I like the song Softly. It's weird, sort of janky guitars. But ultimately, not a lot of songs on here really engaged me. I think this is solid enough background music, and hey, if you're an indie pop fan, you'll probably love this. But if you're not an indie pop fan, I don't imagine this would necessarily make you one. Clara's Immunity, I thought it was all right, and my favorite song is Softly. All right, the OC's Face Stabber. <laughs> Face Stabber is the I don't even know what studio album by the California-based rock group 
OCs. OCs have steadily been one of my favorite bands of this decade, and after releasing one album after another, year after year, this seems to be their sort of big celebration album at the end of the decade. This decade, I think they have made some of their best material, period, and this is sort of them indulging in that sound and going off the wall. It's an hour and 20 minutes long. Some of the songs can range from one minute to 14 minutes to the big 21 minute closer at the end of this. And while I liked this album quite a lot, this is very clearly fan service. This is here for the diehard fans who just love the OCs and just want to hear an hour and 20 minutes of weird, strange, distorted, powerful guitar solos and weird rock songs. Ultimately, if I were to recommend somebody an OCs album, I don't think it would be this. It's too long and too kind of indulgent for any new listeners to really be grabbing on to anything. If you want to get into a really good rock band that has some really great stuff in their catalog. I would suggest listening to, if you're into something more experimental, something like Orc, or if you're into more conventional songwriting, maybe something like Mutilator Defeated at Last. This album is for the diehard fans, of which I am one of, so I very much liked it, but I wouldn't necessarily say it was flatly the best music that came out this month. OC's Face Stabber, I liked it a lot, and my favorite song was Snicker Snee. Young Thug, so much fun. Young Thug is an Atlanta rapper and he is back with a big album for this month. So much fun. I thought it was pretty all right. I thought Young Thug was steadily coming through with catchy, fun songs, though. I didn't necessarily think there was anything on here as bombastic as some of my favorite Young Thug songs, stuff like Wyclef Jean, Homie, Liger. The big song off of this album is The London. Personally, I thought this album through and through was kind of samey. You know, it wears me out at a certain point. I, I can only take so much listening to people brag about money, about sex, about drugs. I know that expecting something different from Young Thug at this point, that goes kind of outside of the music that he makes. You know, nobody's going to be making a trap song about like reading a really good book or something, expecting Young Thug to make songs outside of topics like sex and drugs and money would be kind of like expecting a fish to live on land. I get kind of tired of it about the halfway point. There is one moment on this album that gets me every time I hear it though, and that's on the song Lil Baby, where Young Thug is rapping about drugs. Young Thug is just for some reason so excited about Ferris wheels. Maybe he just really likes carnivals. Young Thug, so much fun. I thought it was pretty fun. And my favorite song, it's hard to pick a favorite song off of this. It's pretty consistent the whole way through. I would have to say just probably listen to the London because that's probably the catchiest thing on here. All right, lastly, Brockhampton's Ginger. Brockhampton, America's favorite boy band. They are back with a huge release for the month. Ginger. Brockhampton, you might know them for their legendary 2017 run of the Saturation Trilogy. Three super consistent, off-the-wall and creative rap albums all delivered in one year, all kind of cataloging and creating the rise of Brockhampton, who are at this point one of the most unique groups in rap music. However, the group kind of suffered a massive ordeal in the wake of the Saturation Trilogy with the loss of one of their band members due to allegations of sexual abuse, physical abuse, violence towards multiple women he was seeing at the time. This in the lead up to their follow-up album to that trilogy. In the wake of that, they created their album Iridescence, which was sort of discussing about how they're dealing with all these issues in the limelight. In a weird way, I think Ginger and Iridescence kind of bookend each other in how they deal with the whole Amir situation. In that Iridescence was 
them looking at that situation from the point of view of the rowdy college-age kids who made the Saturation trilogy, whereas I think Ginger is them looking back on that situation from the point of view of a group of people who have been able to sit through it and sort of grow and mature as a result of it. This is clearly a more grown-up Brockhampton, but at the same time that lack of youth to me brings a lack of youthful energy. Don't get me wrong, when this album strikes, it strikes hard. Songs like Boy Bye and If You Pray Right, more somber notes like No Halo and Dearly Departed, I would say is among some of the best material Brockhampton has released, period. But for a lot of the album, it feels like the group isn't necessarily bringing their energy to the table. And I guess with what this album is going through, with the circumstances it is made under, you know, is it right for me to be asking these performances of these members? Truth is, I don't know, but ultimately I wasn't really vibing too much with the music this time around. Brockhampton do come through with some really good ideas that I would like to see continued and expanded on. Ultimately, I think Brockhampton show with this album that they're on the right track but I still don't necessarily think they're there yet. Ginger by Brockhampton, I thought it was pretty good, but ultimately a mixed bag for me. And my favorite song was Boy Bye. Lastly, I just wanted to throw in a few extras, some goodies for this segment. I wanted to do some catch up on some music that didn't come out this month, but is fairly recent. What I want to highlight here is the Cleo Soul song, One. Cleo Soul is an artist on a London sort of R&B urban contemporary label called Forever Living Originals who I think are doing some really awesome stuff right now. Cleo Souls 1 is this very dreamy, very angelic, very glossy, and very soulful R&B tune about political unrest, about current concerns. I was very happy with what I heard from Cleo Soul. If you're interested in some really interesting R&B that's coming out right now, I highly recommend you check it out. And lastly, I kind of want to give a classic recommendation for the month, uh, and I thought this is the first one of these that I'm doing, so I might as well throw in one of my favorite albums ever, M.I.A.'s Kala. A lot of non-Western sounding production here given to a lot of Western ideas of hip-hop. Of course, M.I.A.'s Paper Planes is the sort of big, huge single off of this album, the one that sort of catapulted M.I.A as a mainstream artist. If you haven't heard this, definitely give it a shot. It's really worth your time. It's an amazing album. I It's stuck with me throughout so many years. So with that, I did kind of want to include a Spotify playlist as sort of a reading list for this series where you can find all of the music I'm talking about. Give it a shot for yourself if you have Spotify. If not, I'll also link all of the songs as YouTube videos in the description. But yeah, added to the playlist, we have Anna Wise's Nerve, Moonchild's Money, Rap City's Whoopi, Brockhampton's Boy Bye, JPEG Mafia's Jesus Forgive Me, I Am a Thought, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards, Planet B, OC's Snickersy, Claro's Softly, Young Thug's The London featuring J. Cole and Travis Scott, Cleo Souls One, and the M.I.A. song, Boys. And that is it for this segment, the first installment of which I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you liked this video, to leave a like on it. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Hit the bell if you want to be really nice to me and give me a special treat for my birthday. This has gone on long enough. This was supposed to be short, and then I ended up talking forever. Oh dear. I hope this made for some good content. Thank you for watching my music review business on The In Between Show on 93.5 Friendship Station. I am your host, Alex Mitro. And I hope you had a good time.